Hi everyone, this is Amy with Key Delicious Life. Welcome back to my channel. Thanks so much for clicking on this video. I appreciate it. Please take just a second and give me a big thumbs up and let's talk about these chips. Now, I, as many of you know, I've put this in some of my other past videos, how much I love Quest chips. I love them. They're great. They're a great alternative to going off of keto or binging or, you know, when you need something and you need that crunch. These are great. They are a bit pricey. And then if we look at the ingredients, you will see there is a lot of ingredients in there that may or may not affect us. Some people are sensitive to the whey protein. Some people are, you know, definitely cornstarch is one that is probably not super favorable on keto. Um, we've got sugar is listed here. These are relatively, you know, pretty good keto ingredients, um, but they are expensive. So depending on, you know, your budget, you may or may not be able to afford buying these. These are delicious, by the way. Chili lime flavor. Oh my goodness. But I wanted to make my own. So I just want to show you, look at these chips. This is basically what they look like. Listen to the snap. Yes, just like a cracker. Um, now I'm experimenting with different flowers. I've used almond flour. I've used miracle flour, which is from the lupin bean. Um, it, it's a, a very, a really good flour that works well for keto baking. I've used, I'm using coconut flour, almond flour, and then the lupin flour. I've made these with both the lupin flour and the almond flour and a combination of both. And I found that using a combination of both gave me the best results. I'm still working on it, but I was so excited about this. I just wanted to get it out there and share it with you guys because I know this weekend is Super Bowl Sunday and a lot of people are really, you know, looking for great, um, you know, ideas for party foods. So chips and salsa, chips and guacamole, you know, whatever it is that you want to serve or enjoy on Super Bowl Sunday. So... I thought I would get this out there, give it a try, let me know what you think. Maybe you can come up with a different version and share it with me. So um, let's get started. Let's make our dough and I will show you how this is done. I've, this is all that's left. I made a lot yesterday and the whole family loved them. We were all sampling and trying different versions and yeah, it was. they turned out really good. Okay, so I'm gonna start with a quarter of a cup of almond flour and a quarter of a cup of miracle flour, which is the lupin flour. Now for the lupin flour, what I noticed is it can come out a tiny bit bitter, but what I did to help, you know, make them not as bitter was I added um, salt as well as a little bit of sweetener. The sweetener will help bring the bitter back down into balance. One teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of garlic powder, one teaspoon of chili powder, a quarter of a teaspoon of paprika, half a teaspoon of cumin, teaspoon of onion powder. Okay, we're just gonna whisk these ingredients together. This is definitely where you can play and add in other spices um, and make all different kinds of flavors of chips. Now we're going to add in egg whites. And I find it takes about three to four tablespoons. I find it takes about three to four tablespoons, give or take, of egg white to get your dough moistened to where it will form into a dough ball. So I'm gonna start out with one tablespoon. And I'm just gonna use my fork and kind of drizzle the egg whites in, allowing it to coat. Like so, and then I'm gonna do one more. Okay. 
And then I just sort of use my fork to mix this all around and make sure that I've gathered together all of the powder down there. And it looks like two tablespoons is gonna be enough for this one. So now you're gonna need parchment paper. Okay, so we want a nice big square. <clears throat> We're going to use two squares of the parchment paper. Take our dough, and I find that you can make these in bigger batches, but I find that making it in um, a half of a cup of the flour quantity at a time allows me to um, experiment with different spices, and I can mix it up a little bit. So just kind of make it into a disc like that. And then put your other piece of parchment paper on top. And then just use a rolling pin and we're going to roll this out. I like to kind of get it going into one strip like so. Um, get it as even as possible. And then I just turn it and we're just going to work our dough and make it as big as possible and as thin as possible. And it's okay if it's not perfectly square. Try to get it as square as you can, but so I'm just gonna work this dough and I will get it rolled out and then I will show you the next step. Okay, so that's about as big as I got mine rolled out. So now you're just gonna peel off your parchment and it should come off really nice it, I haven't had any problems with it sticking but look how thin this is it's like you can see it it's paper thin what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut this into strips just like this now obviously the straighter you get your your you know strips on your edges the better chips it's gonna make but you know, it, it's what, it is what it is. So I just basically use the tip of my knife and I just start doing this sort of design. Use just the tip, you're just scoring the chip there to get it into that shape. And trust me, it doesn't have to be perfect because once they bake, they come apart perfectly as a chip. So I just go through and just make them. You can make them as big or as small as you would like. Just takes a couple seconds. It's not hard or tedious at all. So now I've preheated my oven to 325. We're just gonna take this whole piece of parchment paper, put it right on our baking sheet, and bake these in the oven until they are, it takes about 13 to 15 minutes, give or take, depending on your oven, but you definitely want them to get nice, kind of a golden brown. If you take them out too soon, they can be tend to be more chewy and not as crispy, so watch them really closely don't overdo them but make sure they do get a nice golden brown and you can tell they'll practically turn into a chip right in the oven and they'll lift right up off of this parchment paper so let's go get these in the oven and then we'll make our next batch all right so those are in the oven so i'm going to go ahead and do my next batch i'm going to be using coconut flour we're going to do about a quarter of a cup of coconut flour and one tablespoon of the lupin flour. Or if you want to omit the lupin flour, you can add a little extra of the coconut flour. Totally up to you how you want to do that. Now you could also add some psyllium husk. You could add some ground flax. I have some of that. So I'm just going to play around and make different variations and see how they come out. So here is some flax seed. This is milled brown, which I got for $3.99 at Ross. And we're gonna add a tablespoon of that. And here's what it looks like. A nice, really nice color to that. So I think that'll make a great chip. 
And then again, I'm gonna add my spices and seasonings. And if you like yours more spicy, I love cumin, so I love to add a little extra cumin. The paprika really reminds me of Doritos. So, of course, you know, add the spices that you think you're gonna like. I think for this one, I'm gonna go for some Cajun. A half of a teaspoon of Cajun, half a teaspoon of onion powder, half a teaspoon of cumin, a half a teaspoon of salt. And I just realized I forgot to put a little bit of sweetener in my last batch. So I'm gonna do a half a teaspoon of monk fruit sweetener. And that's just, it's not gonna really make it taste sweet, it's just to help balance any bitterness. So we're gonna go ahead and whisk this together. You could add chia seeds, sesame seeds, any kinds of seeds that you have. You could probably even use a little bit of pecan flour, walnut flour, whatever flours you like, you could do this with. Okay, so let's add our tablespoons of egg whites and we might need a little more since we're using coconut flour because as you know coconut flour is very 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 absorbent so just add as much as you think you're going to need doing it this way where you just drizzle it and push everything around with a fork to get it nice and coated and I th I'm pretty sure this will definitely take three or four tablespoons. Tell you what, your kitchen will smell amazing with all these spices baking in the oven. It's looking pretty good. I might just drizzle in just a tiny, tiny bit more. Definitely get in here with your hands. It's kind of fun. Place our parchment over the top once again. And just turn your paper as you go and you can get it as square as possible. Spot that needs more, I just kind of work the dough up into that spot and try to see how that evened it out a little. Key with these is getting it as thin as possible. Let's, okay, so far so good. We were able to peel that right off. We're gonna make our strips. Just gonna score it just like we did before. That, that piece broke off. If they break off, it's okay. You're gonna get little little cracks. Use the very, very tip of your knife. If you use too much of your knife, it will drag and pull the chips apart. Now I noticed these are a lot drier, so you might want to add a little bit more egg white than I, even I did. Um, you know, as you're making it, you'll just see, you'll just notice as you're working with these different combinations, you're going to notice the different textures, and some are drier, and hopefully these ones hold up okay in the oven. All right. That one's ready to go in. Yeah, this is definitely a lot drier. So if I make this one again, I might add a little bit more egg white. So let's go put these in the oven and we'll be back in a minute. I'm gonna do a, ha a quarter of a cup of my coconut flour. And then I'm gonna use, that's about maybe two tablespoons of the lupin flour. We're gonna put in about a teaspoon of psyllium husk. And I'm gonna do another tablespoon of the milled flax seed. I think for this one, I'm gonna go for some Tuscan seasoning. So I'm gonna put in about half of a tablespoon of the Tuscan seasoning. It is a lot chunkier of a seasoning. Do our half a teaspoon of salt and a half a teaspoon of sweetener. I'm going to go ahead and do some more onion powder, half a teaspoon of onion powder, and half a teaspoon of chili powder. One tablespoon of egg whites, 
I'm just gonna pour that one in that together and just keep adding a tablespoon at a time until it forms a ball. All right, I just wanna show you guys, here's the chips. See how they just lift right off? They're crispy and you can see how they just lift right off and how they just literally break apart for you because you've scored them with that knife. And look how perfect the shapes are. These are really crispy. You can hear it. So I'm gonna let these cool. These are still hot. We're gonna let them cool and then they're gonna be ready for coating. You make it into more of a square and then that might help you as you're rolling it. So here we go, roll it out. I'm excited to try this Tuscan flavor. I think that might be really, really tasty. Making it into a square shape definitely helped. Don't be afraid to experiment with combinations. Um, I find this recipe to be rather forgiving, especially with the coconut flour. It is a lot more uh, crumbly, but look how pretty that, that looks, that dough. So I like to go the longer, use just the tip of your knife, to score and then you just start making your chips. Yeah, these are a lot more crumbly, so just use very much the tip of your knife, the barely, barely, barely tip of your knife. Alright, that's how fast it took me to score those. It really does not take any time at all. So these ones are ready to go in. I'm just going to slide these right on our baking sheet and in they go. This is our first batch. I just have to tell you, they taste phenomenal. Look at the thinness and listen to this. Listen to that. Listen to the crunch. So good. Sorry for eating on camera. If you don't have this, it is okay. You can still make these chips and make your fresh salsa, your fresh guacamole. You can spray some um, olive oil or whatever oil that you like, spray that on here and then sprinkle some sea salt. I think I'm gonna leave these ones plain. They taste so good, so, so good. I'm gonna leave these ones plain for dipping and I'm just gonna spray some, I'll show you, oil uh, cooking spray. I'm just gonna spray that lightly and then I'm just gonna sprinkle some more Himalayan salt all over these. It'll just kinda help it, help them, help it stick so these will be have a nice saltiness to them. So there's my first batch. Amazing, delicious chips. Okay, so here's my cheese coating. I'll show you how I'm gonna add more to this. So we're gonna add our cheese powder. Okay, so I added two tablespoons of my cheese powder. You can add more or less cheese coating. Just, you know, taste it as you go, as you make your chips, you'll find you like more of something and less of something else. So totally individual, but I'm giving you the basic recipe. Okay, now we wanna add one teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of garlic powder, one teaspoon of onion powder, one teaspoon of chili powder, and just a little under a teaspoon of paprika. And again, add more or less of things that you like. Three quarters of a teaspoon of fine ground pepper. And that is our cheese coating. So just give that a good shake. And there's your cheese coating. Now, like I showed you before, if your chips are really 
If your chips are really nice and dry, you might need to spray them to give them a little bit of oil coating so this can stick to it. But you just put your chips in the bag and give them a little toss and you end up with this. Okay, these are the Tuscan seasoning. I just have to tell you, this is amazing. These, these taste really, really delicious. I did put a sprinkling of the cheese coating on these as well. So delicious. So I've got all kinds of variations here and I'm excited. These are, good. These are, good. These are a little bit more fragile but they're very, very good. This is our last batch, and I'm just gonna sprinkle a little bit of um, ranch seasoning on this batch. All right, guys, here is the final presentation. Look at all these beautiful chips. We have Tuscan, we have cumin, um, not cumin, Cajun spices. We have ranch. We have some cheesy coating here and here, kind of all mixed together. We have beautiful homemade guacamole and beautiful homemade salsa. And I will list all the recipes down below and all the different ingredients that I used for these chips. Trust me, it is worth it. You have to try these chips. They are super easy to make. I didn't have any batches not turn out. They really all turned out. It's just up to you to what seasonings you want to add. And it's just super easy and delicious. Like really, really good. So, But yeah, wouldn't this be a beautiful platter to serve at your game day or at a party? I mean, no one would even know these were. this was a keto platter. In fact, these chips tastes better to me than any tortilla chip I've ever had. So I am so excited and so happy that these turned out. So please give it the recipe a try down below and let me know what you guys come up with. There's so many different variations you can make with spices and seasonings. So anyway, I'm going to dig in. I'm just going to grab a chip. I want to show you how well they hold up. This is the guacamole. It's so good. Mmm. It's so delicious. Sorry, I'm not going to go on camera, guys. I look like a hot mess today, so I'm just giving you the behind-the-scenes taste test. Absolutely delicious. Let's try from over here. I'll try one of the nacho cheese salsa dip. Yum. Look at that. Oh, yes. So good. I feel like I'm at my favorite Mexican restaurant right now and I get to actually indulge in all of it. So I am so happy. All right guys, that's gonna do it for me. I hope you'll give this recipe a try. Let me know what you think. Thank you so much for watching this video and please, as always, give me a big thumbs up and leave me a comment down below and let me know what you think and I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.